Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're doing an install video. I know I haven't done one of these in a long time for really too many things, but it's nice to get back on track and be able to actually do a teching internal video and simply leave it at that. Today we're installing the P&W Dynamics Hulk FET. This one I've been trying to get around to for a while. Um, this is the version that is not the drop-in, it is the solder-in, and we're doing the two gate wire install. Now I'll also walk you through the one gate wire install and kind of give you the, the, the idea of that, even though I do not have one on hand to install. They're really not terribly different, so I'll kind of walk you through the differences and what you need to do to install that one versus this one. But in the meantime, we're going to focus on the two gate wire install. Now today I'll be installing this in a VFC version 2 M4 gearbox. I feel like most installs are going to be done in M4s or something very, very similar. So I figured just kind of walk every th one through the uh, the gearbox that most people are going to be using. Uh, most other gearboxes like an AK with two gate wire are very, very simple to install. It takes like maybe 10 minutes if that to install it. Uh, just because you have to want run wiring through trenches, measure it, and things like that for a, a M4, it can be a little bit more complicated, so I'm going to take the more complex route here. Currently I have the gearbox open and we still have the old wiring installed, so the first step is to actually remove most of the components, the cylinder system, um, the gears, everything like that, to make it a lot easier to install your wiring. Uh, then we're going to take your trigger switch out and remove the original wiring. Now we've got our trigger switch unsoldered here. All our original wiring is out of the gearbox and we can proceed with installing our new MOSFET. Now we do get basic instructions on how to install our MOSFET. Kind of gives you some links on the wiring here and it gives you a little bit of a walkthrough here. So you can see that there are two gate wires here going to the trigger switch. So neither actual electrical uh, wire, uh, your negative or positive wire is going to go to the trigger switch. Two little, little wires are just going to go there. And then your negative and positive will go to the motor. The negative is going to be the green wire, and the positive will be the white wire in this case. Now we can go ahead and take our MOSFET and everything out of its nice electrical bag here. We've got, if I can get everything out of it there, there we go. All of our components, so we've got our three motor connectors. Uh, you really only need two, the third one is in case you mess something up. Four pieces of white heat shrink. I actually like this heat shrink quite a bit. It heats up very quickly, shrinks to a very tight size, and goes really well with the uh, the gauge wire here. You get our Dean's connector, the uh, waterproof shielding that's supposed to go around the connector at the very end, and then our Hulk vet. As you can see, it's got two purple gate wires. And those are going to go to your trigger contacts, and then the opposite end will go to your motor connector. So the fun part, and maybe the most difficult part, is measuring and getting all the lengths correct. All right, so we got quite a bit of length of wiring here. It's a little over a foot, actually. And so because I'm running this to a VFC M4 that's got a crane stock, it's obviously going to be on the left side here. I want the MOSFET to be at the end of the buffer tube here. So it's actually going to be quite a wire run. I don't want it sitting in the middle of the buffer tube because this little guy here is a pain to install if you have a MOSFET that sits over and it just doesn't fit. I, I've done it before, I wish I'd lengthened the wiring, so we're going to have a long wire run to the very back of the buffer tube. So you need to measure that accordingly. And then the wiring back here can be, you know, it, a couple inches, however you want to do it. I'm probably going to have it be about three or four inches to, just to give it some, uh, some decent length in the back. So having a good ruler on hand is also really necessary. Something with millimeters definitely. Inches, it's a little more inaccurate. Millimeters, you really want that accuracy. So for the positive wire, I cut those at 130 millimeters. It gives it enough room on an M4 to wrap around the back of the pistol grip like it's supposed to, not running it up the front, but the back, and uh, enough room to wrap back around. And then the negative wire, since it just runs up the back, I usually cut those at about 100 to 105 millimeter, depending on how much slack you want there. From this point, measuring the gate wires, or in this case the purple wires here, to the trigger contacts becomes the easy part. It's just a matter of running it through the gearbox trenches and cutting it where it needs to be. Just to keep in mind, because you are installing a couple more wires into the gearbox, it really wasn't designed for this, you will probably have a very interesting time getting all the wires in the grooves properly. Getting them to sit like this might be a small miracle, but it's definitely doable. Um, the way I'm doing it, I am running the white wire here as close to the bottom of the gearbox as possible and then running the two gate wires just above that. You don't want them on top of each other, you want them side by side like this. That way when you put the motor and the pinion gear through, it's not going to rip any of the wiring, hopefully. 
Uh, when you do get this all assembled, I'll show you kind of a trick here to also help to not snag your pinion uh, on the wiring on the way out. So there are a couple things you can do there. Um, at this point, I do almost have the gate wires measured. I'm going to go ahead and install the trigger switch here and then cut the gate wire and then resolder those. Now your usual soldering practices should still be in effect here. So don't forget to strip and tin each wire as needed. Now we can install our two gate wires here on the trigger switch. Bending this last wire and installing it with needle nose pliers might be a little bit easier, so keep that in mind as well. Now you've got the most difficult part of the install done. Getting the wiring in, getting the measurements done, that's the tricky part. Once you have the gearbox back together, getting the motor pins on, getting the connector on, that's the easy stuff. So you're halfway through the battle at this point. Now let's touch on the single gate wire connection a little bit. Uh, as you've seen, I've got both the gate wires for the two gate wire setup hooked up to the trigger switch. The single gate wire, you've got one gate wire going to presumably um, the top uh, contact on your trigger switch just because it's the, the easiest to run a smaller wire to. Uh, you're running two positive wires, the white wires, to the other contact here. So when, they, uh, when you actually pull the trigger, it's sending a small electrical arc to the uh, MOSFET. So it's telling it to, okay, I can actually transfer power now. Uh, your single gate, uh, single negative wire is still running to the motor, but you've got two white wires going to one single trigger contact. All right, with our gearbox back together, we can go ahead and install the Dean's connector and motor connectors. These are the last steps, and then we'll install the uh, water shield heat shrink around the connector, and we'll be all set to go. First thing we're going to tackle are the motor connectors. You want to take a wire stripper of these and just strip the casing right off. Really simple. After that, we'll go ahead and tin our little ends here. Now what I like to do is put the motor connector in my little vice grip here and then elevate the gearbox on a small platform. You want to get this at a decent angle here. If it's at a really weird, just jagged angle, it won't quite work as well. So we're going to get some solder in here. I'm going to kind of maneuver it where I want it to sit and then let it cool for a second. And then same with the second connector here. I'm going to go ahead and take my heat shrink after I give these a second to cool and then place it right on the ends and we'll want to turn that over in a second and then get both sides because just heating up one side doesn't quite do it. Now I'm sure everyone's got a slightly different method of installing a Dean's connector. So this is just mine. Go ahead and tin the ends of the connector here. And I'm going to go ahead and cut a few inches away from the end of the MOSFET. Make sure you have enough room there that there's some decent slack and it's not too close to the MOSFET so you don't damage it. Go ahead and repeat our tinning procedure here. And before soldering these last two ends on the Dean's connector, make sure you have your heat shrink on the wires beforehand. Otherwise, there's really no way to get it on and you might end up just having to unsolder and redo it. So let's go ahead and install these. White is positive, so that goes on top of the T. Green is negative. And we'll go on the bottom of the T. Then we'll use a lighter or a match to melt the heat shrink, or shrink it I suppose. Then our last step is the casing around the connector itself. Keep in mind this is a really really tight casing you got on. It might take some wiggling, some trial and error. It took me a good 30 seconds to a minute just to kind of wiggle it on here. So I want to heat that up. And this does take a little bit to shrink here, so be patient. This has been the install video on the PNW Air Dynamics Hulk Fit. They're really not terribly complicated to install. I find that uh, definitely having the added wire in here can get a little bit tricky sometimes, um, but you can really easily get rid of that, uh, that annoyance by going with the single gate wire setup, which I feel can sometimes be easier to install. 
Uh, so we've got the MOSFET installed, all the connectors are done. At this point, all you have to do is actually drop it in your gun. So let's go ahead and do that real quick and test it out. Now additionally, before you finish your install and put your motor in, keep in mind, see this white wire down here? You want to make sure you're not going to rip that when you pull your pinion out in the future. So you probably want to smooth that out and make sure it's not, uh, not getting in the way of anything. All right, we have a 7 1600 milliamp hour battery hooked up to it. All I've done in this gun is change the piston and the spring. Everything else is stock except the MOSFET, of course. Let's go ahead and give it a try. All right, MOSFET is working just fine. Semi and full auto functions are retained. I think we're good to go. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Prodigy from Kilo23. I hope you guys enjoyed the install on the Hulk Fet from PNW Air Dynamics. They're a fantastic product. I've really enjoyed working with them. I've already installed them in about oh, four or five guns now. And uh, they, they've been working really well, haven't had any issues, and they're quite easy to install. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll catch you next time.